Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I am joined here the first time ever on my channel, a new friend of mine, Laura McGrath. How are you today, Laura? I'm really good. Thanks, Bryce. How are you? I'm so good. And you guys, there might be a little bit of a lag because Laura, Laura is one of my Australian friends. We've got, I keep laughing with Tamara that this is not just esoteric Atlanta. It's also esoteric Australia because we have so many Australian people in this community of ours, which is awesome. I've told Tamara so many times that besides my own country, Australia is one of my favorite places that I've ever traveled to in the world. There, we were just chatting offline that there's a lot of similarities between the southern part of the United States and the southeast and Australia, um, which kind of leads into into our conversation because Laura, you have you did our, the media course with us, and you have opened up not one but two YouTube channels. So before we get into it, guys, she doesn't have her videos up yet, but they're coming. I know she's got some videos already done because I've been lucky enough to watch one of them because they're really good, you guys. But I'm going to go ahead and ask all of our friends here over on Esoteric Atlanta to go ahead. I'm going to put these links in the description box below and subscribe to both of Laura's channels. The one being her blog channel, which are, is a more of like a fun channel where you're really talking about your experiences, all that kind of stuff, just under her name. And then let me clear the screen here and pull up your second one, which is more of like a strictly business when it comes to, to, to people who are not really interested in, in the quirks of your life, but are just interested in the business aspect of what you're here to do. And so you guys go, go support a sister out, go help a sister out. We're all in this together. Laura, you are one of the wisest women that I've gotten the chance to meet, especially because you are young to have figured out so much about the world around you. But first of all, let's, let's start with, with point A, who is Laura? Who, who are you? What's introduce yourself to my audience. Well, I'm Laura, and, and uh, thank you for the nice introduction. And as you mentioned, I was born here in Australia. And I think that second channel kind of gave it away as to what I'm doing with my life, which is property investing. I didn't start that way. You know, I grew up, I went to a private all-girls school, which was a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of more after that I left school that I kind of started to find myself and started to go down a path of, you know, doing a lot of reading a lot of self-help and personal development and finance books. And I really found a passion for, for the property side of things. I really enjoyed watching a lot of those TV shows like Fixer Upper, uh, Million Dollar Listings New York, you know, just kind of like dreaming. Um, but also during that kind of starting to create my own reality from that as well, finding what I liked and read, you know, I started uh watching a lot of different content on YouTube for property stuff. And yeah, a lot one of the one of the things that really did change, I think the biggest change for me was when I read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah. And that really started to, to kind of change my mindset on things and learning about business and investing and how to make property work for you and how to make assets and money really work for you. And that kind of led me down a path of going to a property mentorship. I did a New Zealand mentorship and a UK mentorship. And now I'm looking at moving to the UK permanently to do property and buy more properties as well. But in the meantime, I have actually done my first deal, which was fantastic. 
I ended up getting a job working for a developer here in Perth. And from that, I was able to find my own first property deal. And it was, I guess I'll give you the the out the outcome of that deal because it was it it worked out really well. i I purchased the property during COVID. Now I think a lot of people at that time would have been really nervous to actually go and buy property. But you it was kind of the best time to do it because everybody else was scared and property prices were low. It was a buyer's so was market. Pick up a, it was a buyer's market. So I was able to pick up a property for 355000 did my due diligence. During that time, the government was actually giving out grants for new builds. So I got 45000 in grants from the government. And I lived in that property for a little bit and had outgoings of about 25000 and then sold that property for 455. So I made 120 grand from that first deal. So now I'm getting ready to move to the UK and do more deals just like that one, maybe some different strategies as well. So that's a little bit about me. And I will say, Laura, because I watched your first video because it was part of our course and we, 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 we edited and stuff. And I told you, I am not a numbers person. I am, you know, the, the more philosophy side. And I was always, I've always been very intimidated. Even at 40 years old, I'm very intimidated by that kind of stuff. And after I watched your first video, I was like, oh, that makes sense. You had a way of talking about property investment that wasn't scary. Because I think a lot of people, Laura, um, in our world get intimidated by the big words of a bank and the big contracts. And so they they get almost intimidated by by entering into that world of investments. And something you said that was so fascinating to me, um, I don't remember if it was in the course or last time we spoke, where you said something about be the bank. And we, we know that the, the financial yes. system in our world, you are very, very much awake and aware of what's going on in the world, just like our audience is. We know about the corruption, we'll say, in the in the, the banking systems. And let's start there. What do you mean or what did your mentor mean by be the bank? Well, what they meant by be the bank is, you know, obviously we give our money to the bank and they use it for things like overnight money markets. They're making a lot of money and they give you like no return on your investment, maybe 1%. And then you pay taxes on that 1% interest that you earned. Now, the thing about property is if I find a really great deal and I can get private investors to come in and fund that deal, because I know that the outcome is going to be really good, I can then give them a better return on their investment, say a 7% return on their money, they understand that it's being put into a property. They can see that all happening. They can understand the numbers side of it because I would have done that beforehand. Then we can take the bank out of it. You know, Lloyd's Lloyd's Bank is one of the biggest banks in the UK. And they're coming out saying, we want to be the biggest landlords. We want to own the most property in the UK. And I'm like, no. I'm like, let's give the power back to the people. Yeah. Let's show people how they can use money their money to buy property without having to use them or work with people who are actually doing these things who can give them a better return on their investment or do a joint venture where you can both share in the cash flow. Yeah. So it's it's being able to actually give people a better return on their investment. And that's through that, the tool of property. The great, it's the great that's the great awakening. To me, it's not somebody coming in and saving you. It's you learning how to save yourself, how to out outplay the bad guys, if we if we if we want to say it that way, I mean, look at what happened with GameStop. You know, like people are wising up on how to play their game, and and that is that was so powerful when you said that. And as you're saying that, we even know here in the United States, which like Australia, the continent, the American country, excluding Canada and Mexico, just our United States is a. I mean, we have got five different time zones, right? So it's a huge, massive. There's lots of land here, especially the Midwest, where it's just plains. It's just land and land and land. Well, we know that Mr. Gates, let's all just say that that way, is now going up and buying all this land. Why? Because it's the best investment you can make. I mean, we've talked about this. I don't know if we if we talked about it in a meeting or just one-on-one, uh, Laura, but me being a history fanatic, we look at like the UK, for example. How did people get the title of being a noble or being aristocratic by being landowners? They would own land. Mm-hmm. And then the people that lived on that land would then ta- be taxed to them. 
So it's all comes back to land, doesn't it? And God ain't making any more land. You know? Exactly. And I, I learned from my research as well that there's actually three asset classes that have allowed people to hold their wealth throughout the biggest times of uncert economic uncertainty. One of them is gold, one of them is property, and the other is art. And I always used to think when I thought of art, I was like, oh, you know, the big old fancy paintings that are worth millions of dollars. But this art is so many different things. Art is music. Art is YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's that ability to create. Yeah. But, yeah, it is. it is. My uh, grandmother. And, yeah. Sorry, guys, there's a delay because she's in Australia. <laughs> my grandmother's family, um, all of my family that went through the Great Depression, of course, we weren't alive for the Great I didn't have any family that really struggled in the Great Depression. And my great, my my dad's mother's family did well because they own movie theaters. They own picture houses. Yep. And uh, liquor sales, people yep. who owned bars are owned, I don't know if, um, if, if Prohibition was in the Great Depression era or not, but the speakeasies did well, you know, like, you know, it, it's, that's true. That is true. And the thing is like, I like what you said that like, you can actually see it. So sometimes I feel like with the banking system we have today, you know, back in the olden days, they would carry around pouches of gold or they would trade a chicken for some wood, you know, like there was a, there was a, there was actual seeing of actual items being exchanged. Whereas today it's all computerized, but I like how you said that you can actually touch the land. That's your land. You have, Yep, you it's tangible. Yeah. And if all else fails, it's your land. You own that. That is an asset that is yours. It is your piece of property. And that is that is amazing. Um, and it is out it, it's out it's outsmarting. The powers that be have been doing this for a long time, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 I guess I kind of went down the process of figuring out what they were doing, mm -hmm. understanding they wanted to take the power away from us and figuring out how they were actually using their money acquiring assets because at the end of the day as well money is a tool it's figuring out what they were doing and being able to replicate it so that you can take that power back you know at the in 1971 this is when the whole monetary system changed because nick president nixon yep. took the dollar off the gold standard yep and so what happened was they made agreements with saudi arabia to then back the us dollar by petrol so then we're on the petrodollar and that was the that was when it started to become a case of the dollar actually losing its value every single year. When it was backed by gold, it actually gained value every single year. Yeah. So that was when really the monetary system started to change. So now it's a case of going, okay, well, this piece of paper is devaluing every single year. How can I use that to the best, best of my ability to put it into an asset that can give me a return and take that power back and then be able to use that that knowledge to then help other people do the same because if all of us are out there you know buying property and not not necessarily always buying property but taking our power back and figuring out their game and taking that power away from them it's giving the power back to the people absolutely i love that so much because you know i mean again I'm, i'll reiterate this guys i mean i it frustrates me to no end when people just sit on their bums and expect somebody to come and rescue them and i'm like how how clever is that of the bad guys to the controllers to make you believe that someone's coming to rescue you so you rest on your laurels and then you what do they want us to do own nothing and be happy you know like when actually there's things you can do you don't have to be the savior for the world but you can do things within your own community and with your own life to start shifting collectively shifting that power balance and that's one thing you know here in the united states our government was always set up with our constitution to be a country that was run by the people for the people. And so if we take that, that attitude into everything, every country in the whole world should be run by the people for the people, you know, and, and that's a way to, that's a way to do it. And so one thing I know, um, Laura, that people are going to, are going to assume, um, because that's what we do. And my dad used to say, when you assume it makes an ass out of you and me, so we don't want to assume anything. We don't want to speculate. A lot of people are probably sitting there thinking, oh, she probably has a trust fund. She probably got all this money to do this, but from her parents or her family, that's not me. I don't I only have like 20 bucks in my checking account. Like I can't do what she's doing. Can we talk a little bit about that and kind of bust those myths, that speculation? I definitely do not have a big trust fund. That was definitely not the case. I got my first job when I left school 
and it was in a, at a department store. So just a casual job at a department store. And this is when I was at uni. So working a casual job at university. Mm. And what I decided to do first and foremost was I actually found Dave Ramsey. And I was started to go down his route of, you know, paying off my debt. And the debt that I had at the time was my student loan. So I was taking all my money I was making, budgeting and paying off my student loan. And it was probably after I finished university. So I studied accounting and finance. After I finished, I got a job as an accountant and it was my first year as an accountant where I paid off, finished paying off my student loan and actually was able to start saving. But that was also the time that I actually went to the property mentorship. And so I went from being in a situation where I just paid off my debt, had maybe a couple grand in my account and then paid for a mentorship, which cost probably about the same as my university degree. So I went back into debt. And the day that I paid, put down the deposit for the mentorship, I actually came home and had $19 in my bank account. And I was really, really stressed because I was like, go, you know, the next day I was getting ready to go to work. And I was like, if I tap this train card and it needs to recharge, I don't even have enough for the automatic recharge on that card. So certainly didn't. Eventually then got my paycheck come in and I could start rebuilding that. But that certainly didn't happen. And the only reason I could actually do that property deal was because I'd left my accounting job and I was like, got stuck here because I was wanted to originally move to the UK in 2020. Mm -hmm. But that obviously didn't happen because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So I'd left my job and I was like, okay, I need a pivot. I didn't have a lot of savings, but I started learning how to trade crypto because that was kind of what was all the rage at the time. And it was in a bull market. Uh, And I did okay with that not great but what had happened was i parked some money into some crypto started the working with a developer and by the time i actually was going to get that property the value of those crypto had gone up so much that i had a down payment for that property so that's the only reason that i could actually do that deal was because of trading trading crypto so i did this from from nothing just getting a casual job, investing in myself before, mm-hmm. you know, I, I did go and splash money on a lot of, of things. I invested in myself mm-hmm. and my education and that's how I kind of built built that up. So definitely didn't come from a trust fund. Absolutely not. It's so funny you're saying that. My, um, you know, we have this whole thing here in the United States, like white privilege, white privilege, whatever, which is bullshit. And my my boyfriend, his whole life has never taken a penny from his parents or any, no one's ever helped him. And he really worked hard to working multiple jobs to start his business, to start his, and now he has his business, but he's also kind of, you know, it's funny because off camera, we talked a lot about the educational system and your struggles with that. And he kind of had the same growing up. I mean, he was a military kid. And so they moved around a lot, but his IQ is like extremely high. I mean, his, his, his mother told me his IQ, it's very high. So he's very smart like you are. He didn't do well, well in school, but he's smart. And he did the same thing a few years ago. He started to study, like literally took the time to sit down and he started studying the market and just studying it and listening to lectures, listening to YouTube. Because that's the beautiful thing about our time today is you can find a lot of information for free on the internet and he he doesn't make one of his great qualities is he doesn't make quick decisions where i'm more the one that's prone to making quick decisions and he'll study it and and ruminate and think and he ended up making a shit ton of money just off of following investments like crypto like these different things that he started following and just putting a little here and seeing what happens and then putting a little here and seeing what happens and it just goes to show you that there's a, that saying, that motto, where there's a will, there's a way. And you nothing nothing good in life is easy. It takes time and, and knowledge. And as the Cassiopeians say, knowledge protects and knowledge is power. And so, and I will say, because 
Laura, you have such a great way, like in your video that I watched where you talked about, and that's the thing with her channel, guys. So the blog channel she's doing is kind of almost going to be like a reality show in a sense where you're really showing your personality as a female, as a young female in this world and explaining everything you're going through and what led you to make certain decisions, moving to the UK to a different country that's vastly different from, especially the weather, from Australia. And so that, that side of you, that's a human being that I think is what's the most, in my opinion, that's so powerful because it's showing people that you're not one of the elite. You're not one of someone that had a trust fund. You, I'm, I'm going to guess your parents are not into property investment. No, I, I've tried to like help them from that Definitely. perspective, but no. And when I first, actually, when I first started talking about it, and when I told them I paid for a mentorship, they were in complete shock. They actually thought I was going to get scammed, but I didn't, thankfully. So, yeah, so, so they're, they're like definitely you, not. My dad's... You didn't have parents. My dad's an account. My mom worked in construction, so... So you didn't have parents sitting there telling you, now do this, now do that. Let me. Ha you figured this out by yourself because you wanted it. And you were clever. And that's what we've, but when yes. it comes to like changing the matrix, changing the game, again, it's not going to be a big shut. It, it's going to be pe people being like, I'm fed up. I need to figure out how to do this so that I can change the trajectory of my life and for the life of my family. And once you figure out how to, you know, Catherine Edwards, our friend Catherine Edwards, she posted something yesterday on Instagram. I thought that was great. And I'm paraphrasing what it said. It was like, always have people in your life who are doing something better than you. Because you always have somewhere to go and learn. You can always learn from them. And you did that. You sought out mentorships. You sought out people to guide you and teach you how to do this. And I just think it's awesome that you're going to be putting that up on the internet too, to empower other people, other just common 99%, the 99% of us that just the normal, regular, everyday people that the, the matrix is trying to, to squash, you're now going, here are the tools to fight back and to take your power back. So that's really, that's really and cool. five years from today, we have the same. Yeah. And five years from today, you're going to be the same person, except for the books you read and the people you hang, hang out with. Yeah. You have the ability to change your external reality. And yeah, I guess I was at uni going, I don't want to work a nine to five for the rest of my life. I didn't like how everything was structured. So I was like, I'm going to find a way to not have to be a part of that. And yeah, you, you do, you go down a path and you, I start learning, especially how like the banking system works and how all of that works. And I was like, well, what can I do? I can't change the fact that these people are doing these things, but I can figure out how I can empower myself, what I can learn so that I can fight back. So I don't have to be a part of that matrix. So I can use money as a tool to make things better. Uh, you know, look at, for example, I don't know if I can say this, but um, Mr. T, mm -hmm. he's a property investor. Yep. And if he didn't go out there and do that, we wouldn't have somebody in politics challenging what everybody else is doing. That I just got chill bumps. You know, so that. That's such a good, I just got chill bumps by you saying that. That is such a, that's a, that's such a good point. I know that's the reason why he didn't have to take, you know, I don't know if you know this in Australia, he wasn't paid. The president gets paid, I think like 250,000 a year or something. And he did not want to be paid. They had to pay him something. And so he only took like what a dollar a year or something like, you know, something very or he donated it out there's something ha where he did not he actually did it for free because he had made so much money he didn't have to take handouts because that's the problem with politics isn't it they people start i believe people start in politics mm -hmm. with with a good heart but they have to have money in order to and then they have to and they get tied in and roped in with the puppet masters where now they're under their thumbs and so it gives you money is freedom you know money is not i, I don't like that saying money is the root of all evil because it's not it's it's is someone the root of all evil is evil if you have bad intent and you get money it's going to be bad but if you have good intent and you use it like it's a tool as you said you use it as a tool to help others to help yourself to help balance the power it's it then it's and it's not it's freedom at that point it is absolute freedom and um you know you told me and i don't know if you want to talk about this if you don't want to talk about this yet laura we can wait but that you have a, a goal don't you there's something you want to do 
once you start really building up your portfolio, do you want to share kind of like a nonprofit idea in a sense? I don't know if we'll call it that in the future, but, and I thought this was beautiful. Do you want to share with the audience, like where you personally want to, t in the direction you want to go personally with your goals with this? Sure. It's, I kind of look at it as my 10 year plan um, to eventually build up some, you, the thing about property is you can do multiple businesses. Yeah. I can buy cash flowing property I can do deal sourcing where I can find deals for other people as well. I can have a property management. There's so many different things that you can do. Or you can join venture with companies that are doing this. And eventually I want to get to the point where I can buy an apartment block, renovate it, and then have it as kind of like a place for, for the homeless where they can actually come, they can have shelter, they can have food. But then what I can do is I can actually then employ them in one of the companies that I hopefully we'll, we'll be owning. So then it can kind of be a, a very symbiotic relationship where they can come, they have a place to live, they have food to eat, then they have a job so that they can have employment. Mm -hmm. And then what they can be doing is also learning about how to budget and how to actually manage money as well to kind of break the cycle versus, you know, just um, giving the giving the money and uh, and then you know, it's it's not it's not ending a cycle, but this can really break a cycle and create a really symbiotic system that feeds into each to to each other. I think that's so brilliant because that homeless people break my heart. Like we have a lot of homeless people here in Atlanta, it just breaks my heart. And it's like they can't catch a break. Like it's like they've hit such rock bottom that no one will hire them. They don't have a place to shower and cut their hair. They don't. They just literally cannot catch a break. And so giving them that stepping stone to rehabilitate, it's like a you know, on my channel, we've talked about feral people, all that kind of stuff. But and so I'm not saying it in that sense, like the feral people that live in the mountains, but people on the streets do end up getting a little bit wild because they have to survive. And so there's almost like a rehabilitation to bring them back into society. And and I think that's just such a genius idea. So that, again, is you using property and money, the same that the controllers do, but in a way that's benefiting society and helping other people and of service to other people and helping other people be of service to themselves, giving them that power back and just giving them that yeah. chance to take their power. And back. it is, it is all about that freedom as well. And if you can have that passive income, then you have the ability to go out there and have that time to enjoy life yeah. to the best of your ability. Yeah. So, and that's what it's all about. You, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. Yeah. So, you know, and we know that there's plans in place and they want to do certain things, but we don't know if and when things are going to happen. But I'm like, if I can go out there and live my life to the fullest and buy myself that time, you know, that's empowering me and that gives me the ability to enjoy my time and then find ways to fight back. Yes. So and, smart, and fight, fight back smarter, not harder. You know, it's one thing to, to throw temper tantrums online all the time. It's another thing to be like, all right, this isn't getting me anywhere. It's like uh, I just sent Tamara a clip. I think I shared it on my Insta stories of this town. I believe it was in Michigan here in the United States where their board of directors for their town had made the, cut these deals with China. Um, and the town people were not happy about this because China hates America. And so you know what they did, Laura? They changed the locks. The town got together, all the people of the town went to the, wherever the board meets and they changed all the locks on the buildings and kicked them out. Like that's, oh, that's like really smarter, not harder. That's smarter. Like instead of just protesting, holding a sign and crying about it, they're like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. We elected you into these positions and you sold us out to our enemy. Uh-uh, that's treason. We're going to change the locks. You are no longer welcome to be in this position of power in this county. You know, it's like I, I shared with them um, with the stuff going on with the schools, with the kids. I shared this on my show. It's still on my Instagram, guys. So if you want to go to my Esoteric Land Instagram, download it and share it, please do. But we were seeing like with the kids that what's happening in the school system. I have to be careful what I, the words I use on YouTube. But, you know, with with inappropriate conversations around intimacy and body parts with really little kids. And parents have been showing up here in America at these board meetings and actually reading out loud the kids' books that their kids are bringing home that are totally inappropriate. And um, the board members are like, no, we can't have you read that. She's like, they're like, it's funny. We're adults and you can't have me read that, but you're reading it to my five-year-old in kindergarten. Well, this has been going on for a while where parents are getting shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down. And one, I think, I think somebody said this happened maybe in Ohio. And I can only imagine what happened. 
one parent or a couple parents got smart. You know what they did? They went to the mayor. They showed the mayor of the town all their kids' homework. The mayor went and spoke to a, ju a local judge in the town. And here in the United States, I don't know what it's like in other countries, the judges are elected by the people. You elect a judge. Um, and they showed the judge and he got, the judge said, yes, this does count as child P, CP, which is a felony. And so the mayor went to the board meeting. It's on my Instagram, the video, someone videoed it, sat up at the board. And basically I'm paraphrasing what he said. He goes, I have spoken to a local judge. She has confirmed that this is CP. You have two options. You can either resign tonight or you'll face charges. And he turned around and walked away and everyone busted out. So, you know, boom, done, taken care of. Like people are the power. They're fighting smarter, yes, not harder. Yes. And, that is and I think that's, that's what this is all about. Yep. Because, you know, if you sit back and do nothing, you know, you start to see it in, in um, during the, the 2020 period, how they actually started in America to give out checks. Yeah. You know, yeah. To, to people. Yeah. And I'm like, if people get reliant on those kind of things, they're trying to crash the economy. Yeah. And get people okay. reliant on, on checks. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's like... That, that to me seems like a communist system. Absolutely it is. 100%. So like they're, using, they're using money as a tool to try and get, to try and actually break the barrier between the rich and the poor and get rid of the middle class. Yeah. That's how I see it. And they're using money as that tool. And I'm just like, you know what? There are so many ways that we can go out there in this world and actually make money. Mm -hmm. And if we are making money and we're building our wealth, their plan to try and push us down into a system done yeah you know it's and the thing about it is the thing about it with property as well is you actually don't need a lot of money to start doing it so if people are wondering what i'm going to be doing when i first move over there i'm actually going to be doing a strategy which is called rent to rent so i'm going to be renting a property from somebody under a corporate let and then i just go in and i fully furnish the property and then do it as short stay accommodation so I will never own the property, but I'll control the property and I'll be able to make a net profit from the difference between what I'm getting from the short stay and what I actually pay to the landlord. So I don't need to own the property either, but I can then make that passive income. And that's a lot less than actually going out and buying a property. And I'm like, if I can go and show people, because I'm going to be doing it from scratch, if I can go and show people how they can actually do this with little money, give them the tools be like, look, you can actually go and do this. That's empowering a whole bunch of us to go up against the very few. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do You're this. Unstoppable. You that point. a big bank account. It's Take amazing. Me. It's amazing. And that's so, you know, I, my mother used to tell us all the time growing up that if you allow the government to take care of you, then you allow the government to control you. And, you know, as you're saying with communism, I feel that way about Nasara and Jasara that people, I feel like that's communism too, because I see so many people who are going without money and they're, they're putting themselves in very dangerous situations. They've stopped paying their bills. They've stopped paying their credit card bills. They've stopped paying their mortgages because they believe that somebody's going to swoop in and give them a check, which is the exact same thing as what happened when you're talking about in COVID. So it's suspicious. Like, you should have a little bit more discernment. Like that's suspicious. You know, we know. I remember, I remember hearing about that and reading and saying, oh, they're going to have these meetings so that you can get your, your pay packets. And I remember thinking like, well, first off, I never heard, any, I never got an email to say, no, here's where, here's where you go. But also I was sitting there thinking, wow, I've spent all these years learning about all these ways to kind of empower myself. You know, do I just stop because somebody's going to give me, a paycheck and it had it got to a point where i'm like i don't think this is coming maybe i actually learned these skills for a reason mm -hmm. to actually because i i enjoy property yeah. and for someone to just give me a check and then me actually not be able to go out and fulfill my dreams and make my dreams come true and i was kind of a bit disappointed by that <laughs> it dumbs you down when you don't have the opportunity to have to figure things out it dumbs you down. I feel the same way about the med beds as well, because I see people like, oh, you know, I don't need to go on a diet and lose weight or exercise because I'm going to get a med bed. I'm like, I've spent eight, almost 18 years now breaking myself to 
heal my body, to work through my shadow side. And you're telling me that you're that entitled that you can just hop in like a tanning bed type tube and all of a sudden you're right where I am. You skipped your chapter one is now you're going to late fraud all the way to chapter 10. No, that doesn't, it doesn't work. That's not the point of life. The point of us being here from a spiritual perspective, the point of us being here is to have friction is to have struggle and figuring out how, like what you, what you actually, when the last conversations I had with Doug Kramer, who just passed away, he said, I finally figured out what, um, to rise again from the dead means. It doesn't mean the physical body. It means you you work on yourself and you refine your soul through the obstacles and it rises up again like the phoenix rising. And that's kind of what you're talking about is you didn't have a trust fund. You didn't have all these things, but you said, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah, I'm going to make mistakes along the way, but I'm going to learn from those mistakes. If you make a mistake and you learn from it, it wasn't a mistake, right? It's um, yeah. It's as my teacher in India says, don't interrupt someone's karma. Don't ever interrupt somebody's karma because that's important for them. It's important for them because there's wisdom that comes from that. It's um, I use the uh, I use the analogy with the, the the match a lot. You know, if you hold a match by itself away from the packet, it has everything on it to light itself, but it's not going to light itself unless it's struck struck up against that matchbook. And once it strikes, it this big light comes off of it, right? It, and that's what our life is. And you get that feeling of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get that feeling of fulfillment when you actually achieve something, when you put that hard work in and you have that goal in mind and you actually put the work in to get there, you have that fulfillment inside of you. Yeah. Whereas if somebody comes and gives it to you, you you, you don't you don't get the same feeling. And you're not you as don't. stable, you're not as grounded it's, in yourself. I, I say that with like exercise too. It's like, you know. People, let's take running, for example, because a lot of people understand this. If you want to train for a marathon, you're not just going to sign up for the marathon and go run it, are you? You're going to have to start running that one mile, running that two mile. And there are going to be moments where you don't think you can do it. But the next day, you're going to run a little bit further. And it's not going to be comfortable. But every time you take one more step further, you feel that sense of, wow, I'm stronger than I think I am. I'm faster than I think I am. And when you do stuff like that, like you were saying, like not really liking the academic side you kind of prove to yourself laura that you're smarter than you actually thought you were yes and how i was a c grade student <laughs> i was a c grade student i did not get the good grades um but I, I i think there was just some kind of subconscious knowing in my mind that it the school the education system it wasn't as important as maybe what they make it out to be and i went to a school with a lot of pressure yeah. And maybe just subconsciously I knew that. But then I enjoyed my school experience. I enjoyed the social aspect. But when I actually, it was only after I left that I actually started learning the things that actually fulfilled me, that I actually really enjoyed learning. And that's when I kind of got that progress. So I agree. I went to a private school too, and it is a lot of academically. It's a whole comparing and contrasting my high school experience compared to other people who went to public school. It's a very different experience. And um, I think I just walked away with a bunch of PTSD because it is so much pressure academically um, to, you know, they, they do give you like my, my, my senior year, our senior year at the school I went to is really your first year of university. So you can opt out when you go to university, you can then test out of your first year and start at your sophomore year. Most people just repeat it again to make their first year easy at university easier. Um, so I agree with you. And I absolutely agree with you. I think that a lot of my knowledge came post required school, right? When you get to really focus on what it is that makes you happy, what is your passion? What you know, my my grandfather, who was a surgeon, used to say, if you if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's the thing, right? He was right. Because we're not, you know, laboring is one thing, but doing your dharma is something completely different. Right? It's very different when you actually enjoy what you do. And that I think we are meant to work as well we all came here with different skills and gifts and talents. I believe that we all have something to contribute and there is a way for everybody to try and to actually monetize that passion. Now, I feel like that's where we are in this, in this part of, of life. We have that ability to take what it is that fulfills us and actually monetize it, especially with things like YouTube. Yeah. There's, there's so many different ways. So oh, many the amount of ways. opportunities. Everybody has a skill. 
the, the amount of opportunities you're going to get, Laura, just to, just from putting yourself out there, still that you probably haven't even fathomed how many opportunities are going to come just from putting yourself out there. And it's interesting, I will say. So my my stepsisters, both of their husbands work for corporations. My sister and I, our partners and us, we own our own businesses. My my brother in law has his own business as part of his family business. My boyfriend owns his own business. I'm my own business owner through YouTube. And my mother always made that comment that her kids, we're not slave to anyone. We don't have to ask permission mm -hmm. to go anywhere. We don't have to ask permission to go on vacation. We don't have to ask permission to randomly take a day off if we're not feeling well. We don't have to ask permission to go. How, how dehumanizing is it to be 30, 40, 50 years old and have to ask permission to go eat lunch? Yep. And when you work and your, when I was working, it was like you could only go between these hours yes. to your lunch break. If you missed it, you missed, you missed it. it. Yeah, so. that's dehumanizing. That's dehumanizing. And so I, I'm fully in support of people working for themselves because it does give more quality of life to your life, which is what you were saying, too. It's that quality that you are able to afford with with all of this. And so and I think it's brilliant. So I'm going to guys once again, I'm just going to talk you guys through this one more time because we talked Laura and I talked about this because there are going to be people out there that are want to just going to want one of the basics of what they got to do to be pro a pro invest in property and so this is that that second channel is basically just going to be business right right Laura yes and it's the going to be every single deal that I do you see it from start to finish plus all the numbers and know exactly how I did everything so that's going to be that channel and then this channel, which I'm super excited about because I love the human quality to everything, is going to be about you doing it, what you personally are going through. So you're going to get to see more of a realistic perspective so people don't get in their minds that, oh, I can't do what she's doing because she has some secret weapon I don't have. No, you're going to be showing people on this channel how you as Laura, as a, as a young girl from Australia, middle class, did this for yourself in this time of great awakening now laura i'm gonna i'm gonna again i'm gonna ask my community because again you guys i have seen laura's first video she sent it to me it is fantastic it really did i send you laura that stand-up comedy who the, the about the sketch about hgtv did i send you that clip i might have tried to i don't know if, or did i yes actually, i actually think you did yep where he yes. taught this kid up, and HGTV is our channel here in America where they have property brothers, you know, flipping houses, all that kind of stuff. And it is very addictive. I find myself watching that show. I love it. Like it's so addictive to see the, the, the remodel of these houses. The transformation. Yeah. It's true. And he, what was, what was he saying, Laura? He was like, he accidentally flipped channels and he's got stopped or he lost the remote or something. It got stuck on this. What do you call it? This wondrous channel called HGTV. <laughs> And, and then he ended up being like, no, pick that stone counter, not that one. And he's yeah. like a thug guy, like he looks like a gangster, like arguing about like the, the color of the wallpaper and how he's addicted now to HGTV. But it because, tra I mean, listen, transformation stories are beautiful, even with like weight loss and the, the struggles people, it's, it's, it's because it's, it gives hope. It gives that feeling that humans are resilient and they can be resilient within their own selves and within the life around them. It's possible for you to yeah. do what these people are doing and to see the miraculous work that creation can, because you are a creator as, as a human being with a soul, with that spark of light, you are a creator and you can do that. So Laura, I'm going to ask you, uh, do you have just because I know I, I ask this question of my audience a lot to give me ideas, but is there an email people can email you if they have an idea of like a show topic they want you to cover with, with property or questions they're confused about that you can maybe cover in content on the show? Is that something you'd be willing to do? Uh, sure. I might actually open up a different separate email okay. and then I can give that to you and you can Send put it, it down below. And I'll put it in the yep. description box below. That's a really good idea, guys. I tell that to all the people, like when you open up a platform, it's nice to have the platform email and then your own private email because you're going to get a lot of emails, girls. And so you don't want to like miss anything accidentally. That's, that's vital to, to, to your, to your personal life. And um, yeah. So you guys, is there anything you want to tell the audience, Laura, about your, uh, your channel, did we, did we get everything or is there something else we forgot or? I, I think that's it. It's, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be different going from like the middle of summer in Australia to the middle of winter in the UK. I think I'm going to get a shock, but you'll see all of that. That's all going to be documented on the vlog side of things. 
So it'll be exciting. It's going to be a journey. And I really hope everybody wants to follow along and see see how it goes and learn some property. It's it's honestly so much fun. Property investing is very exciting and I'll make sure to make it very exciting for everybody too. I think I was telling you offline, uh, Laura, that I follow this guy on Instagram, this British guy who comes back and forth to the United States and he is hysterical comparing and contrasting the different. I was telling Laura that here in the United States, we call fannies your butt. So like butt burn. So like your hiney, that's a fanny. What is fanny in Australia and the UK? What is that, Laura? Is that your crotch? It's the other side. The other side the of front. the front that the females have. Well, I was telling Laura, so the yep. thing is, is here, I used to hear all the time, the older ladies at church, would, if a church went too long, they would say, Lord, I got fanny fatigue, which basically means their butts were burning. But if you said that over the UK, that would imply that you work a very different job. So, so or in Australia, I mean, yeah, or in Australia. Yeah. so that, that kind of stuff, that lost in translation stuff is quite funny. It's quite funny. And I will say, I, I, I have noticed cause I film with so many people from all over the country, the people that I can film, I film with consistently have started dropping y'all in. And I'm like, I done, I did my job. They're starting to say like, y'all, my Canadian, my, my good friend is Canadian. He'll say y'all now. He'll be like, y'all, eh? And I'm like, I've done my job. There it is. <laughs> so, so those cultural differences are are hysterical. And so that le- that brings some humor to 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 a very harrowing time that we are in as a collective. And humor is something that the darkness cannot create. Only only those of us of the light can actually laugh at our predicament sometimes and feel feel the, the humor in, in the situation we find ourselves in as humans. So Laura, I'm gonna ask you this on camera. Will you come back again to the show and Keep us updated on everything going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. awesome, guys. Well, once again, I will have Laura's links to both of her channels down in the description box below, as well as her business email she's going to send to me in case you have any ideas of, of stuff. If, if you're inspired by what Laura said today and you're starting to feel like you, you want to learn more from her channel, just let her know if there's any topics with this that are confusing to you. And she can do a, do a video over it that hopefully can... It, 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 it's also when people ask questions because then the, you know, like when I'm in conferences with my teachers, sometimes people ask questions that I didn't even think of, but when they ask the question, I'm like, that's a good question. And I like hearing what the teacher has to say. So you asking that question, allowing Laura the opportunity to create that content probably isn't not just going to help you, but it's going to help a lot of other people too. So, and that's what it all is, right? We're just walking to each other home. Yeah. So, um, yep. so that's big property real estate in the sky. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, guys, well, thank you so much, Laura. I know it's late for you over in Australia. It's early for me over here in Atlanta. And I look forward to, to having you back on and going on this adventure with you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. We'll see you guys soon. Make sure you subscribe to Laura and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye everybody.